Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Taco Tuesday, and tomorrow is a travel day for the Dallas Cowboys. And we have a game that might go a long way to determining how this season goes. If the Dallas Cowboys fall to the New York Giants, um, you can almost best believe that it's over. This is a must-win situation. And so I am going to listen to Mike McCarthy's press conference and try and gauge what we got right now. So let's go to the tape. Oh, boy, I hate you. Hey, David. David. Hi. David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Uh, you're talking last week, one of your points of emphasis was kind of cleaning up the route running and working on that. And, and you talked again about getting off this merry-go-round of 9, 10, 11 play drives and not scoring. Is, is that still a point of emphasis this week, cleaning up the route running instead of going into this game with New York? Well, I mean, we have, yeah, we're emphasizing it, uh, but it's been more classroom and video. Um, and, you know, just because of the nature of playing the Thursday, uh, Thursday game. So I mean, we, we've had our opportunity to... Due to self scout, you know, the preliminary component of the um, yesterday's meeting, but you know, today's really, you know, we're kind of on a Thursday type schedule, uh, just to make sure that we have everything situational in. So, uh, we'll do some individual route running uh, after after the work today, just to make sure we get the, the tempo and the timing uh, down on the, you know, any type of wrinkle that we're going to use Thursday night. Uh, Mike Todd, through the ESPN. What have you made of your team's response the last couple of days? I know it's a quick turnaround and quick. Uh, you have to forget that game and move on. How would you make your team? Well, I think they clearly responded the way you're supposed to. I think I thought they're very accountable. Um, you know, I think they, if anything, to a fault, uh, openly honest um, with the externals uh, on on what happened. But no, they've been very focused. Uh, we, you know, we had a full day yesterday. We had to put in first, second, third down. So um, mm -hmm. we got we were able to get that done. I let them sleep in this morning. Uh, we actually needed some time. As a coaching staff, um, just to, to you know, get the game plans tight and get ready for them. So they came, they came in at nine today, and then was in the weight room. When we started at eleven. So yeah, no, the work's been good. Um, you know, everybody plays in these Thursday games. You, you you're always trying to tweak the schedule, but most importantly, you got, we got to go in this thing with a full game plan. So and uh, we accomplished that these last two days. Uh, John Machado with the Athletic. When you talk about the, the shortened week, just from your perspective, your experience. On that short week, preparation-wise, what's what's the biggest part that maybe uh, hurts you guys that you got, you don't get a chance to do that you would normally get in a full week? Um, I, I think that you know the mental part of it is 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 pretty normal. Uh, you know, the meeting time you still get the same meeting time. Uh, it, it's the full speed. It's the full speed action. It's the rhythm. You know, and, and I'm, I'm just a big proponent, particularly younger younger teams, younger players, uh, the importance of the padded practice. I think that's vital. That Thursday practice, just the fundamental part of it. So, yeah, just the, the physical work is, is where the drop off is. And then do you have uh, any update on Carson or Marquis Bell? Getting better. Um, getting better. Both going to be game time. So, uh, Carson's closer than Bell. Nick? Nick Harris, for Star Telegram. Uh, what's the challenge of this Giants defensive front? Lawrence, Burns, uh, Thibodeau, what are those guys bring? Well, I, th I think it's uh, definitely very diverse. Uh, you know, they, they got two excellent edge pieces. Uh, in, in the way they're playing them, uh, they're a little bit unpredictable uh, as far as what they're doing mm -hmm. on the edges. And, and Lawrence is just he's just a dominant, dominant player inside. So um, I, I was really, really impressed, impressed, uh, particularly the Cleveland game. You know, they they uh, really turned up the pressure in that game, and and and, and obviously the, the sack numbers and the hits speak for themselves. God. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Um, CD Lamb's issues early on is that more about? What they're doing against them, or just not being around as much in the summer? I think it's just you know it's it's part of the way these 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 games and some the season goes. C CD's a primary focal point, you know, for us game planning. It'll be a primary focal point for the defense. So, um, and that's 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 why you play the game, you know. So we we'll continue to do what you know what we have done with him and. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's always little things you're looking to build on, you know, certain routes and so forth. And more in his case, will be 
just you know which slot is he doing it from? You know, because he, he play he plays all four spots as, as as I would refer to it from the you know receiver position. You know, he plays the one, two, and three. He can also come out of the backfield. So uh, we just got to you know continue to move him around. And he'll get his opportunities. Side. Side. Mike, uh, in the running game for the running backs and offensive line, do you feel like there's more chemistry that needs to be developed there between new backs, a couple of new pieces on the offensive line, just in terms of what they're seeing? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, it, this is not ideal for you know when you're looking at, at, at this this format for you know particular statistics, and you know just like anything, you know, we've played three games. I don't know. We have three quarters of two minute offense. I mean, so there, you know, there, there's 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 different things that factor in that. that a number one um, focal point for me is, is is our run game needs more attempts. You know, we need to get more attempts, and uh, we need to get in and out of concepts, uh, and I think that that in itself will help us. Joe, uh, Joe Hoy, All City Dallas, kind of building off that question. How important is synchronicity in the running game from an offensive line standpoint and kind of building that chemistry? Yeah, it's very important. Uh, it's very important, that, and that's really going to my point, getting in and out of concepts. I think the biggest thing is you, you got to play through your strengths, and right now the strength in it needs to be the continuity of the five guys. That's why, you know, when you go back and look at some of the decisions we made in training camp of trying to get to us, you know, who are the first five guys going to be, uh, I always, always felt that that was a, you know, a big decision that always tried to make sooner and later in camp mm-hmm. because especially in today's training camp environment because those reps are they're vital you know mm-hmm. those guys need the opportunity to play together and you know history will tell you time and time again that uh, you know the teams whose offensive line has consecutive starts mm-hmm. equates to wins and, um, and it, it always starts up front. Hi. Hey Mike, Patrick Walker, Dallas, to Cowboys.com. Uh, Kalen Carson dealing with the shoulder, obviously. Uh, Deron Bland is taking some steps and looks in his rehab without giving a definitive timeline. How close is he? Where is he in the process? I know you can uh, activate, not activate, but you can make him eligible to return to practice next week. Is that in the plan? Yeah, I, I know the Pittsburgh game was always, you know, kind of a, you know, a point that you know we felt like would we'd have more information. So you know, once we get past, you know, this mini bye week, uh, you know, I, I think you know I'm hoping things will rev up there. Uh, Scott Dixon with the AP. Quirky stat of the week. This is the first time the Cowboys have played on three days rest uh, on the road. So it's surely off the top of your head, you remember how many times you did that in Green Bay? I do not. I do not. Um, so I don't know how you call it rest. It's tough. It's always a tough turnaround for Thursday. Does that make it even tougher? Does it matter that much? Um, you know, I, I think it's like anything. I mean, if you go th- first time you go through it, you, 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 you have – a different feeling, but I mean, it's you know it's something that you do, you know, twice a year here. I mean, you're going to play two Thursday games, so um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's just part of the part of the deal. Uh, it's just part of part of playing it, you know, for the Dallas Cowboys, and yeah, I, I just yeah, I, I just think it's just uh, I guess I'm used to it. Yeah. Okay, uh, Babe Lawford, 105.3 FM. Uh, you talk about the Thursday games and getting used to it. You've had enough of them now, and you talked about the fact that. Obviously, you didn't have a lot of time to make corrections. How do you, in your position, balance wanting to fix everything that happened execution-wise, you know, in, in the game Sunday, whichever game it would be, and looking forward, you're looking ahead, and getting the game plan ready, and getting you guys ready to play for a Thursday? Uh, time management, lack of sleep. I, I think that's w- w- the way you get it done. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think just. Can't speak on everybody in our staff, but I, I'm sure I was just like, you know, everybody went home, watched the games. You know, I went home and, and watched our game. You know, watched watched the offense, defense, and special teams. And so when I came in here Monday morning, you know, I yes, I had did. you know rooms that I need to visit and make sure we're on the same page because you, the the worst thing you can do on a third on a Thursday game, regardless of what ha- happens, especially when you don't win, you know, that Sunday, is spend a ton of time on that game. And uh, I've done it. Um, and but you, you, Monday is critical. I mean, Monday you have to get the first, second, and third down in. I mean, that's the way I'd, I've always done it. Some people only put first and second down in on a Wednesday. So you, Monday's a Wednesday, uh, Tuesday's a Thursday, and Wednesday's a Saturday. Is kind of how we do it. So you have to hit those targets because not only in preparation for this game, but you know we are still trying to build a you know 
some regularity to our to our training process. Uh, it's it's critical. We we use the word process. How you train, how you schedule, how you get in and out of that. You know, that continuity is all part of the connection that we need to be better at. I mean, we got we have some new players here that you know some older veterans and we got some young guys. So our continuity and connection needs to be higher. So part of that goes through the way you train, how you schedule, and so forth. So you, you have to turn that page. I mean, we Marty Schottenheimer used to talk about the midnight rule. He used to use it all the time. But that Sunday's game is a perfect example. You know, Monday's it. You know, I mean. You know, Baltimore was was finished for us at at, at midnight. We um, needed so, to be finished with that. Um, now, I didn't technically follow that because I, like I said, I came in Monday morning. There's there was a number of discussions that that, that needed to be needed to be had, uh, and then we just kind of built in the self scout into the introduction uh, of the game plan for the Giants. Aaron, uh, Aaron Cousins, Lone Star Live. We, we haven't gotten a chance to see in games some of the reserve defensive backs. So. If Carson is unable to go. What has stood out to you about some of those um, backups there? Well, I mean, they're they're all doing a good job. I think the biggest thing is uh, if, if you look at that, you know, you look at the preseason, uh, is special teams. That that that's where that's where this this really final decision is going to come down to, to to how we move forward with, with decisions if those guys don't go. Jane. One of the issues for the defense this year has been some of the missed tackles, 241 yards. Devin Singletary particularly good at forcing some of those missed tackles. Is it realistic to think that you guys can clean some of that up on a short week? And when you look at the tape, is it effort? Is it technique? What's standing out to you? What's been consistent there? Well, I, I think like anything in fundamentals, you know, you it's like a bank account. You know, you, and that's what why training camp is so important. The padded work is so important. Um, because it, that's where you're able to really work the footwork, you know, to get into the, you know, not maybe live action, but as live as, as possible, as close to the. F- I, I want to stop there for a second because the fundamentals, I, I want us to think about this too, because football now, there's so few practices anymore. You know, I was there for training camp for four practices in a scrimmage. He just mentioned about getting your footwork down, your timing and things like that, which is so key, which is counterintuitive to what the Cowboys do, which is wait till the end of training camp to get guys signed, you know, like C.D. Lamb, um, waiting until, um, you know, basically into training camp to sign other guys and bring them in. There's no cohesion with the team. But go on, Mike, I'm sorry fire as possible so uh, there, there's an investment uh, that's made each and every day you know we have a first period that we do after stretch every time we practice this team fundamentals and uh, so it's in line with 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 your question so uh, I'm definitely counting on the, the you know our bank account here Gary Podell CBS Sports Mike you've coached a lot of young exciting receivers what stands out about Malik Neighbors you'll see on Thursday well, I tell you, I mean, I think any time you see a young man come in the league and, and just, you know, just the way their um, his targets, you know, and his ability to to go get the football. Uh, obviously, I mean, he has the size and the speed in, in the in the uh, the body control. But uh, I, I do I do think he's a very exciting player when the ball's in the air. So that that's what stood out has stood out to me. Todd, uh, Mike Zeke only had 15 snaps last week. Is that some? Is that just the way that the game went, or is that totally. just what he's? Yeah, just product of the game. I mean, we, like I said, we were we were behind. We were talking about no huddle in, in two minutes in the middle of the third quarter. So I, I think the last two games, anything that uh, we didn't do that that didn't fit your playtime expectations is on offense is really due to the kind of games we've been in. How do you think he's done, even in the the limited playtime that he's had? Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's been solid. Uh, you know, he hasn't been given a lot of looks, so I mean, it's 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 hard to it'd be be critical of anybody when he doesn't. You know, he, he's not having opportunities with the ball in his hand. Calvin, uh, I know you've been pretty busy, but I don't know if you know Brett Favre today sitting diagnosed with Parkinson's. I don't know if you were able to talk to him about it or just your reaction to that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when I heard the news this morning, I reached out. So uh, just a tremendous, uh, tremendous man. You know, obviously. Um, I think it, it, it touches, you know, touches all of us, you know, and obviously Brett has, uh, you know, he's worked with a lot of people in this building. So uh, it was that, you know, our, our hearts, our prayers, you know, our thoughts go out to him and his family. David. 
Mike, I think the first three weeks you have 270 snaps for your rookies on offense and defense, which leads to the league. Is that something that hurts you in some ways now, but you can see where it's going to benefit you as the season goes along? And is that an unusually high number, even even for you, who, who is willing to play rookies? Um, I, I don't pay attention to it no more. Um, it just uh, you know, I've been down this road a few times, so yeah, I, I just you know, there, there's a long game you know process to this, but at the end of the day, uh, we we got to make sure that we're we're giving all of our guys, you know, especially our young players, you know, the things that they need to be successful in the game Thursday night. So, I mean, that's that's our short game, our primary focus, but. Yes, I, this this will serve us well. I mean, I've always taken the approach that, you know, everything we do from a schedule and training standpoint, whether it's how we install the offense or defense, you know, how we train, going all the way back to the spring, it, it's always catered to the to the rookies because, you know, the veterans are going to get theirs, um, and then the reality is, the older guys get you, you kind of you rest them a little bit in the physical part of it, whether you're at training camp. And it's twofold because it, it helps them because it keeps them sharp mentally, keeps them emotionally engaged. But mm -hmm. you got to always find ways to get your young guys reps because you know my experience been has been those are the guys that are playing in you know January and December and November when those games really really count. You know we're just you know you can kind of look at it. We're getting a little head start. All right, thanks Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Okay. All right, so there we have Mike McCarthy. Um, seemingly not under pressure i'm surprised you know the way he came in laughing and <laughs> smiling and all that seems to be feeling nothing maybe that's the thing to do is uh not to let people know that you're sweating and and losing your shit um you know here's the reality of a lot of things there's that we have a convergence of many many things that are going on you have a lot of young players that we are starting Two on your offensive line. You look at Overshown. Overshown seemed to be hesitating, you know, in some of the plays and stuff. And maybe that's what Micah Parsons was talking about. Guys got to trust that I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do, and they need to do their thing as it is and not play hero ball. Well, I guess being the hero that you say Micah or whatever. Um, you've got young guys playing on the offensive line. And you've got a new defensive coordinator. There is still time maybe to turn it around maybe i hope but we're gonna have to wait and see how all that works out but right now you know we got a lot to work on we got a long ways to go and we'll see what we're gonna see but tomorrow's a travel day for the cowboys and thursday night you better be ready to play you better be ready to try and save the season because i don't think if we lose this one it's gonna get really really bad all right good people peace out